Do you have questions about maybe things that are happening in your life? You know what? I spoke a lot at the prison here, and many people in the prison have hard feelings toward God, how their life ended up. There might have been something that, and, and, and I go in there and I share with them, that was the work of the enemy. You know, Jesus said in John 8, 44, you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father will you do. He was talking to the religious people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. See, spiritually speaking, there's not the two families on planet Earth. You remember what it says in the book of Colossians? Giving thanks unto the Father who hath delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of light. Those that, and, and Jesus said in John 3, 3, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. You can't enter into heaven unless, unless you're born again. You know, Brother Dennis, I go to such and such church. Praise the Lord. That's not the way into heaven. Amen. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I've been believing in the Lord for years. You've got to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. When I was in the bars and pool halls, and many of you know my testimony, I played some of the best pool players in the world, beat some of the best, been in the magazines, been on TV, till one day Jesus said, that fellow there, I'm going to use him for my kingdom. And I want him to be the best in the world, T. I beat some of the best in the world. But Jesus had other plans. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I believed in the Lord. I believed in Jesus. But I wasn't saved. Did you know the mafia believes in Jesus? The mafia does. Are they going to heaven? If they repent of their sins and turn to Jesus Christ. You know the word repent means to do a turnaround. Toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, the mafia believes. But they don't serve the Lord. When I was in the bars and pool halls. I believed in Jesus but there's, oh, thank you, Lord. Here's what the Lord just gave me. Uh, that's where it begins, is in your belief. You can't, thank you, Lord. You can't follow someone who you don't believe in. If you don't believe in him, you can't follow him. That's right. Yes, it starts with believing. It starts there. Because you can't follow who you don't believe in. And Jesus Christ said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. When you take up your cross, it's not always fun. You know, there's been people overseas, listen to me, I'm speaking reality to you this morning, and I'm going to share some great truths with you concerning your life, the past, or maybe the present. But some of our brothers and sisters overseas, it was more than just belief with them. They gave their lives to Jesus. Many of them have been beheaded, crucified, burned at the stake. Not only in the past, but right now, during this time. Many have been killed. What about if that was to come here to America? We know one day it is. Thank God for America. Because God's hand is still on this country. Amen. 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 Yes, that you might have questions inside of you of maybe that something's happened in the past. Why, God? Why did this happen? Why did this happen to me? I've asked that question before, Richard. Why did this happen to me? Have you ever asked that question? Maybe all of us in here has. I want to share with you the word of God that you will leave out of here with a different mindset. 
Amen. Amen. You're there, First Peter chapter four, verse twelve. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now the word of God says here, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Things happen in this life. Amen. Yes. This world is not perfect. Even your Lord said, In the world you shall have tribulation. Yes. But be of good cheer. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've overcome the world. See, there's more to this life than, than where we live in. This ain't all there is. I was awakened by the Spirit of God many years ago audibly out of a deep sleep. Now, I was already saved. He didn't have to do that to me to prove to me that He exists. I, I was already saved and following Him. And He woke me up out of a deep sleep. And let me share this with you. There's another world. Yes, it is. And that world is more real than this world. But we live so much in this little flaky flesh that we think this is all there is. Clara. We got two Claras. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus loves you. Don't allow circumstances in the past or in the present to sway you away from Him. There's going to be things that come to you in your life and you're going to scratch your head and you're going to go, why, Lord? Well, it's to try you. Are you going to follow him when things don't go your way? Our brothers and sisters, I was just sharing with you, they followed him to the end. Amen. That if they renounced him, they would live. If they wouldn't, they would die. You know, there's many people in the church that cannot stand criticism. If you're going to follow Jesus, and the Word of God says in Timothy, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. When you say you're going, that you're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, guess what comes with it? Persecution. Criticism. You, I've been called all kind of names. And the people that called me all kind of names is I've never did anything to them. The devil in them hated the Christ in me. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. But those same people pray for them. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, little G, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of those which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Who blinds men and women's minds from seeing the gospel? The devil does. You remember, see, the devil, Satan, is called the God of this age. The King James says the God of this world. When Adam's lease runs out, it goes back to the Lord, and there will be nothing but righteousness to reign on this earth one day. Amen. A new heaven and a new earth. Glory to God. I believe the Bible. Glory, Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why many people don't come to Jesus. Because they're blinded. They don't see it. I was blinded one time. But thank God. I saw the light. Amen. I yes. wish I could see it. I heard a preacher say one time, he said, you know, I always wished I could sing. Now that I heard you, I wish you could. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I sound good when the music's going. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Praise God. Well, not everybody sees as you see. Not everybody, listen to this. Not everybody has the knowledge that you have. 
But thank God for Jesus. Yes, you might have questions. Yes, things happen in this life because this world is not perfect. It's fallen. Yes. What are you going to do when things suddenly happen in your life you have no control of them? What are you going to do? You're going to rejoice in the Lord. Verse 13 says, But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Turn with me, please, to Psalm 34, 19. Many of you know this verse of Scripture. Psalms 34, 19. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Word. Get into the Word. If you get into your word, the Bible, you find out about God. Amen? If you don't get into the word, within, you will listen to the opinions and the theories of men and women. Look at verse 19. Many are the afflictions, and the word afflictions there is trials and tests. Many are the trials, tests, afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Amen. Thank God. When, when things come up in life, you and I have no power. We can call unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't know how people live, Pharaoh, without serving Jesus. Amen. But I understand that they're blind. There's people in this world, you know, being a Christian, something awesome happened the 24th. Right. Friday day. Right. Hallelujah. Roe right. versus Wayne was overturned. But you know, there's people that don't like that. Why am I going this way? Not everybody has the mindset that you have. Who would want an innocent baby murdered? Innocent blood. Now, forgiveness is available to them. Jesus said, all men are sin shall be forgiven among men, except one. Forgiveness is available. So I remember one time hearing about a lady. Well, I heard the sermon. You know Browns, but we're an assembly of God church. Has anybody ever uh, been to Browns little assembly when the revival was going? Yes, 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 in Pensacola, Florida, yes. I mean, it went on for, what did it go, Dan, seven years? Seven years. Seven years in Pensacola, Florida, Brownsville Assembly of God. Seven years. Well, when I went, I was at the very back where the chairs are to the wall. That's how we were. We were in the back. And it was so exciting in the back as it was up front. Well, there was a lady that had an abortion. She get saved. Jesus saves her, but she has grief because of what she did. Here's the love of Jesus. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. His blood Glory. cleanses white as snow. Yes. Thank you. Well, she, she, she was having some inner problems, and she needed some inner healing. Amen. And so Jesus called her up to heaven during the revival Glory. in Pensacola, Florida. Glory to God. At Brownsville Assembly of God. And she, and she saw her child. And her child went up to her and says, Mommy! That right there brought her deliverance. Right. She saw how real her child was. See, many people only focus on one thing. This physical. You are not a physical being. You are a spiritual.
spirit being, you live in a physical body. When your physical body expires, you still exist. Amen. Every, you know, Adam and Eve, they still exist. They just left their body, but they're still alive. Everyone that has ever lived and will ever live will always exist. They just go to whoever they belong to. That's right. Amen. Amen. There's three worlds. Hell, earth, and heaven. Don't go to hell. Amen. That's right. It's your choice. Amen. The Bible said God so loved the world that he gave the world a way of escape. But many in the world mock it. Refuse it. Say no to Jesus. And when it's to their own damnation. That's right. Hallelujah. The best gift there is, the most precious, valuable treasure is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Money can't get you to heaven. Hallelujah. Education can't get you to heaven. Somebody says, I have a PhD. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes, so, sometimes, People, their head, their knowledge. I remember, you heard me say before, I was in the house of a man that was in Hollywood for 30 years in the wardrobe department. I was talking to him, trying to get him to accept Jesus after getting to know him, of course. He, he said, brother, he says, Dennis, it's hard for me to believe that a man died for me. Because of his education and all that he's heard from other people, he gave his ear to that instead of the word of God and the spirit of God. That's right. Well, whose fault is it then? If he misses heaven, I don't know about him today because he did tell me this. I have a born again, my brother is a born again Christian. So he knew something about Christianity. But he's told me, he said, it's hard for me to believe that a man died for me. Jesus died for him. Amen. But if he rejects the gift, God's hands are clean. God is love. Amen. Yes, is. Somebody says God is love. Well, then he, he, then he won't send me to hell. Your sin sends you to hell. That's right. And you need a Savior. That's right. And Jesus Christ is the only one that was hung between heaven and earth on a cross and spilled his blood. Mohammed can't get you there. Buddha can't get you there. The Indian gods cannot get you there. No one can get you into the paradise of God except through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you hear any other thing, it's a lie. The Bible says in the first chapter of Galatians, Paul said, if I or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be a curse. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ said over there in John 14, 6, I am the way, yes. the truth, Lord. and the life. Yes. No man yes. come up unto the Father yes. except by me. Yes. That's good to know him. Amen. 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 He's more precious than any jewel on planet yes. earth. Yes. And he loves me. He loves you. Yes. That's right. He, he loves you so much. That he died for you. Matter of fact, as you said earlier, brother, God loved humanity so much he sent his son. That's right. And by the Lord, by the Father sending his son, you think he would give you anything less? No. Nope. When he gave you the best? That's right. First. We need our minds renewed according to Romans 12, 2. That our, we need to get our minds renewed with the word of God. You know, when we don't know the word... There's a lot of junk in here, a lot of opinions and belief, and the only thing that can straighten that out is when you get into the Bible and read the Bible for yourself. Right. Amen? I didn't come to hear the opinion and the theories of men. Paul told Timothy to preach the Word. That's right. And, we, and we've got so many, you know, it's just like one time I was in someone's home. Now, this was years ago. And we got to talking about the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. And I was in there working, and the, and the guy said, well, you know, that's not for us today. Huh. <laughs> well, I was waking out of sleep with him yeah. at home. Well, I asked him, have you ever spoken in tongues? He says, no, you have no authority then to speak on it. That's right. 
You receive that from a man. That's all in scripture. Well, they stay away from that part. Because they can't explain it away. All of the Bible is for us. If it's not, let's leave. Let's go home. What are we doing in here? What are we doing in here if Scripture's not for us? Amen. Amen. If it's real, let's follow Him. You know, it's just like over there in Kings. What is it? 17th, 18th chapter? Elijah said, if Baal, if Baal be God, follow him. That's right. That's what he said. But if the Lord follow him. Is that right, T? Right. Do you believe in the Lord? Yes, Brother Dennis. Follow him then. Amen. <laughs> and he will show you great and mighty things. Yes, he will. He will manifest himself to you. He will watch over you. Yes. He will protect yes. you. Yes. And yes, you will go through things. Some things in life you're like, Lord, where you're at. He's there. He's watching you. That's right. That's to try you. Do you love him? Yes, Praise God. Are you going to follow him no matter what? Amen. Yes. Or are you just going to follow him when the checkbook and the pocket's full and the health is good and everything's going your way? I'm a Christian. How you doing today? And everything's going. What about when he turns all that around? Like he allowed the enemy to turn Job's life around. Job was the richest man in all the earth. And so the devil appeared before God one day and said, reason why, he, the devil said, remove the hedge that he accursed you. And the Lord says, go, take not his life. And you know, Job didn't know. He thought that was the work of the Lord. Amen. You know, the Lord take it to the Lord give it. That was the devil taking it. Taking it. The Lord just allowed it. Yes. Are you hearing? Yes. But what did his wife say? Curse God and die. Yeah. Job said, though he slays me, I will trust in him. Oh, it's easy to serve God when everything is going your way. Right. Who couldn't serve the Lord? The blessings of God are upon you. The blessings of God were upon Job, his family, his children. But all of a sudden, that was stripped from him. All right. And then God saw, remember my verse, count it not strange. Let's read it again over there at first, first Peter. Go to first, let's look at first Peter again. Look at it again. 1 Peter 4, 12. Glory to God, we didn't turn back. 1 Peter 4, 12. This is Job's life. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Job's life was fine till one day it was changed dramatically. What about your life has changed dramatically? Are you going to close shop spiritually and say, Lord, I didn't sign up for this. Bye. Or are you going to serve him to the end? Eternity's forever. This little bit of trials and tests we have here for how many years we're here on this earth, they go by very quick. They do. It just seemed like yesterday I was 20, then 25, then 30, then 35, then 40, then 45, then 50. Time goes by quick, but if you serve the Lord, he'll keep you. That's right, he will. Amen. I'm up in addicts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Been in a realm doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Time goes by quick. It won't be long. You're going to be out of here. That's right. And you don't know when death is coming to you. That's right. Thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the Lord just gave me. Who would in here, who in here would ever play Russian roulette with putting a bullet in a revolver and uh, put it up to your head? Is there anybody here that would do that? People play spiritual Russian roulette all the time. I got plenty of time. 
I'll get right with God later on in life. Who said you're going to live that long? You go to the cemetery and you'll find death comes to all ages. Did you know, I'm going to give you reality, here it is. There's people in hell right now. I'll give you truth. There's people in hell right now that died suddenly. They have plans this coming week to do something. They died and they ended up in hell because they put Jesus Christ off. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know what the sorrow, their sorrow is? Not only in, in, in punishment and fire, but memory. Why didn't I get right with Jesus? I wasn't expecting to die. You had a chance, though, the Lord says. I gave you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. And my spirit drew you, but you resisted me. Till finally death came. And they ended up in hell. And I'm sad to say, they're there forever. That's right, that's right. See, the human mind can't grasp it. The human mind cannot grasp hell. Because when people go there, there's no exit. The Lord told Raven, I think his last name was Leonard, Leonard Raven Hill. He preached, a, he's an old time Methodist preacher, and he preached like he was full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Way back under the Methodist did. Till man got involved, he kicked the Spirit of God out. Hello, Romy. I like to flow with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to please the Lord. Some people can't handle the spirit of God and truth, and, and some people try to hear the opinions and the theories of men. There's many people, I shared with you, Mama had a dream, and she was in this mega church. There was heads everywhere. Mama said the preacher was preaching the wrong thing, now. And Mama got up and said, that's not the word of God. I'm leaving. Who's going with me? Mama left that church, but not one person got up. There's so many people deceived by the opinions and the theories of men and women. Read your Bible. Amen. Amen. Then you will know truth. That's right. Read the Word of God. But there's people, oh, you know, I believe in the Lord. Yeah, but you live like the devil and talk like the devil and party like the devil. That's right. There's many people. Jesus said, if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. That's why people ought to read the word. Amen. You're going to stand before the Lord one day. You are. And you're going to be judged according to the word. And what we're going to be judged on is the new commandment. The church is that you love one another. Right. Amen. Walk in love. Walk in mercy. Walk in forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, that's enough of Job. But God blessed Job at the end more than he had. I didn't even know I was going that way. Now look at Proverbs 28 20. Proverbs 28 20. Real quickly. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't you love Jesus? Amen. Amen. Yes. Did you know Jesus loves you passionately? Amen. He went to the cross for you. Yes, Father, I will go. Proverbs 28 20. Hallelujah. Thank God for truth. Thank God for the word. Proverbs 28, 20. A faithful man, that means mankind, woman too, shall abound with blessings. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. See, God wants you and I, when we're going through things in life and we scratch our head and we say, why? God is saying, be faithful there. If you're faithful there in that place, I'm going to promote you. I'm watching you. You're in a trial. You're in a test right now. Many are the afflictions, trials, and tests of the righteous. But the Lord, you're going to go through trials and tests. Amen? Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you would, please, I want you to go with me. We're going to look at someone. That his life changed dramatically. A strange thing happened. And that's in Genesis chapter 37. If you would go with me to Genesis chapter 37. Real quickly. 
And we're going to look here for a few moments. Genesis chapter 37. Look at verse 23. Well, you know about Joseph, you know, chapter 37 of Genesis, you know, looking at verse 3, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, his brothers, and they hated him yet the more. And so you're there at verse 23, but before we start reading, you've got to be careful who you tell your dreams to. Amen. Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine. There are some things that are holy that the unholy don't need to hear. Because they'll turn around and criticize you and say, you two, you're way off. Amen. I remember years ago, uh, I was in, the th I was a little kid. I was still the father's little kid. And gee, my mama died and saw Jesus when she was 13. And I won't tell you how old mama is now. But thank God for health and long life. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. thank you. And I went up when I was a little kid and I told one of my buddies and his mama, I said, my mama saw Jesus. And they didn't believe it. And I went back as just a little kid. And I said, mama, they didn't believe. They didn't believe Jesus. you saw Jesus. And she got all over me. She said, don't you go around telling people that. <laughs> Why? Wow, you're saying something holy that some people, their ears don't need to hear. It's sacred. Are you here? Amen. There are some things you don't tell people. It's between you and God. Amen. So you don't want to cast your pearls before a swine. Well, Joseph told his dream to his brothers that already hated him. And then they hated him even more. That's right. But it was a God dream. That's right. And you know what Joseph did? Listen to me. It ain't 12 yet. Crucify that flesh. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. This ain't the word of God. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Joseph held on to that dream. And I'm fixing to share with you what gave him hope was his dream. Are you here? Amen. Look at verse 23. And Reuben said unto them, Shed not his blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands and deliver him to his father. And it came to pass, when Joseph was coming to his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes, and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spice wreath, balm, and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Israelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Joseph life, one day I'm going to check on my brothers, doing what his father told him to do, what Israel told him to do. Jacob, it was Jacob, but God changed his name to Israel. Hello? Amen. And so he's going to check on his brothers. His life changed. Think about it. Now he's, a, he's sold. Could you imagine Joseph sold by his brothers was going through his mind? Something strange just happened to him. He's trying to figure, how did this happen? I, I can't go see my, my daddy again. 
They're taking him to Egypt. He sold. But Joseph remembered my dream. God gave me a dream. And he took it. And he kept that dream. And that dream gave him hope. I know. Because God gave me a dream one time that gave me hope. So we see that he's, uh, he's, you know, he's in Egypt. And we know about Potiphar. He was sold to Potiphar. And for time's sake, I'm not going to read just everything. But the Ishmaelites sold Joseph to Potiphar. And God blessed Potiphar's house because of Joseph. I knew, you know, Joseph had many questions. Lord, I'm here in the land of Egypt. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Lord, what am I doing here in Egypt? What have I done? What great sin have I done? And it wasn't a great sin he has done. Amen? Amen. But God works all things out. He was gone. He was taken. So now he's in Potiphar's house. And you can look at uh, chapter 39. Look at chapter 39, verse 1. And Joseph was, was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. Somebody says the Lord was with Joseph. Why did he get sold? Because <coughs> God had a plan for him. Joseph. <coughs> See, when you are going somewhere that you had no intention to go, and you're serving the Lord, you're in His plan. Just stay faithful. Amen. I heard this many years ago, and I want you to adopt it. Wherever you're at in life, spiritually, have feet of clay and don't move till you hear from God. Stay put. Amen? Amen. Well, Joseph knew that. I'm sure he could have ran off here at Potiphar's house because Potiphar would leave at times. And Joseph would be in control over the whole house. But we're, we'll read. And I'm sure Joseph could have made a plan. I need to get back and see my dad. But he didn't. He stayed there. Amen? Amen? Now let's go and read. <clears throat> Verse 2, the Lord was, was, was Joseph. He was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Somebody said Joseph was a prosperous man. Prosperity is not only financially. That's right. You want to live long? You want to get around good? You want to enjoy life? Yes. There are some people in their 40s and 50s and 60s. Can't get around. 30s. Are you hearing me? Yes. Prosperity is more than just that. Matter of fact, that right there has meant, has bought out many politicians and many preachers and many child children of God. Yes. They were serving the Lord, and all of a sudden God blessed them with money, and then you couldn't see them no more. That's right. They closed shop spiritually and went into the world. Where'd they go? Thank you for allowing me to preach the truth. Amen. And not just tickle your ear. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And tell you, you're okay in your sin. Jesus loves you. I'm here. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't give the truth to you. That's right. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ loves you and he wants you there with him. He came to the earth, earth to die for humanity. But he wants them people to follow him. Right. To the end. Amen? Amen? Jesus loves the world. <clears throat> and everyone that's in hell right now, Jesus paid away for them if they said no. Amen? Amen? And one thing, somebody says, somebody said before, you might have heard it. Have you ever heard, God can do anything? No, he can't. He can't lie. He can't lie, and he can't override your will. That's right, if he could, Jesus would have did it when he was here on the earth. That's right. God's not going to override your will. 
and he's not going to lie. He's bound himself by his word. And if he moves contrary from the word of God, he'll make himself out to be a liar. And he's not going to do it. That's why we got to come to him on his terms. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, look at verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put in his hand. So Joseph could have left or tried to escape any time. Thank you, Lord. I never, the Lord just gave me this. Joseph was a man of integrity. He was there. The man bought him, and now he was his servant. He wasn't leaving. That's what we need in the church. We need some integrity. Come on. Amen. Come on. Look with me, please, at verse 9. Skip to verse 9. Everything's going good again. Now, his life was dramatically changed when he was sold and, he, and he's in Egypt. His life was dramatically changed. But I'm going to show you he didn't have hard feelings toward God. Kevin, I just saw you. Your life was dramatically changed. We heard your testimony Wednesday before last. But look where you're at. Yes. Let's, let's, let's just look. Look here. Verse 9. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. Because Potiphar's wife... For time's sake, I'm not going to read that. Potiphar's wife was seducing Joseph one day because Potiphar left. And so she kept looking at this Hebrew. Man, that Hebrew, he don't look nothing like these Egyptians. <laughs> and so she seduced him. And then Joseph would have had it. Listen to this. Look at this. Neither has he killed back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. Listen, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Even before the Ten Commandments, it was a great wickedness. Now they have prayed you up and down the street. Amen. I stand on the side with Jesus. That's right. Amen. The whole world stones me or comes against me. And as long as I have the approval of the Son of God, I'm in good company. Amen. 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 Because listen to this. The world's opinion of you matters not. Matter, thank you, brother. Matters not. But his, his opinion of me means everything. Glory to God. You know, it's just like that story I... I share with you a truth happening. Neglected opportunities bring regret. These three boys were in a service. And the evangelist was preaching. And, and, and one of them, the Holy Spirit was dealing with him. Tears was coming out. He got out of the aisle and come down to the, to the altar to accept Jesus Christ. And his buddies up with him said, Sissy. And he heard them say that. And he, he wiped his tears. And they all three ran out the, the door of the church. Went down the road in a train, hit him and killed him instantly. He listened to his buddies instead of the Spirit of God. He was going to get saved, but he turned around and listened to people. Don't you let nobody take you to hell. All right. Are you hearing me? Amen. That place is real. Yes, it is. And our time of opportunity is while we're here on the earth. Once we leave the physical body, there is no more grace. That's right. Good preaching. It's true, Penny brother. He said, He said to Potiphar's wife, because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Even though he wasn't where he wanted to be. Something happened to him in his life. He still served the God of Abraham, Amen. Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. He still served him Amen. in the place where he didn't want to be. So 
some people say, God, why did this happen to me? You revealed your heart to God right there. Right there. Thank you, Lord. That's what the Lord just gave me. They revealed their heart to me right there. How much they love me. Amen? Amen. He's a living God. And I'm going to share this with you. In the beginning was God. He created Adam and Eve to fellowship with, not to beat them up with religion. That's right. Come on. I'm not a religious man. I'm a saved man. Right. Hallelujah. Religious people will hate you. That's right. It was God in the beginning, and it's God in the end. Amen. And he's the one that I give my allegiance to. Amen. And many of my brothers and sisters overseas gave their allegiance to him. When they have a chance to live on this earth and they choose death to be with him. What about if that comes here, Sister Menace? It could, it could. You don't, oh, thank you, Lord. Things have changed in the last two years that I didn't think they would change. Have they? Yes, please. You never know. There's some, something could change dramatically this year. You don't know. We are living in the last days. Yeah. Serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Read your Bible. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, if you look at verse 10, and it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none in the uh, in none of the men of the house there within. And she called him. Well, she was an aggressive. <laughs> and she called him by his garment, saying, "Lie with me." And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. That sounds like Mississippi language, though. And got him out. <laughs> And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he has brought in in Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me. And I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. Now he's being lied about, falsely accused. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass when his master heard these words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this matter did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. Now could you imagine how Joseph in prison said, Lord, am I cursed? My brother sold me to Potiphar, and now I'm, I, I'm serving you, and this is happening to me. Have you ever heard that before? Have you? What have I done, God? Nothing. You're right in his will. Joseph was right there in the will of God. Because I'm fixing to share something with you. It's going to be a great blessing. How many know what 1 Timothy 4.8 says? For bodily exercise profiteth little. But godliness, living for God, but godliness is profitable, profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Living for God profits you in this life. And I'm going to show you how to profit in him. You would think, not Joseph. Yes, Joseph, because he lived for God in the hard place. Yes, he did. Let's go over it. Let's look at, for time's sake, look at, go to chapter 41. 
And look at verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, he's in prison, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Well, the king, you know, Pharaoh had a dream, and no one can interpret his dream and all of his kingdom. And the butler and the baker, Joseph interpreted their dreams, and then one of them said, hey, the guy in prison. Who would think to call the guy in prison? God had him right where he wanted him. That's right. God has you right where he wants you. Yes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Now I want you to look for time's sake, verse 37 through 44. And the king... Oh, excuse me, verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Because Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Listen to this. For as much as God has shown me all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Look at that. Listen to this. What Pharaoh told Joseph. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph. See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Well, we know who really did. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee! And he made him ruler, here it is, over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without you, that is Joseph, without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. You might be in a place you think, Lord, why am I here? Stay there and stay faithful like Joseph did because payday is coming. Amen. He's got you right where he wants you. Amen. Amen. Joseph, listen to this. From the dungeon to the palace to second in command. Well, he said over all this land, only in the throne was Pharaoh greater. That's right. Somebody says, I don't believe in serving God. I do. I do too. Hallelujah! <laughs> I do. He's kept me until this very hour. Yes. That's right. Yes. He's kept you, Marty, until yes. this very hour. Yes. He's kept every one of you until this very hour. It's because of God. Right. Yeah. And Joseph loved God more than anything because it shows he was faithful in the hard place and he was right in the middle of the will of God. And I was from 17, listen to this, to 30. 13 years. At the age of 30, he became ruler over all the land of Egypt except in the throne. Pharaoh was greater than him. And at 110, he died. From 30 up, 80 years, enjoying the good of the land. Yeah, yeah. See how good God is? Yes, you're going to go through some things. But God's looking down. It's easy to say, I love you, Lord, when everything's going good. It's easy to say when the pocket's full and the help is great. I love you, Jesus. But what about if that's taken from you? Are you going to still have that enthusiasm? All right, now. Are you going to still be excited about Jesus? Because he's right there the whole time. He's just watching you. Amen? Amen. Well, I'm ending here. Genesis 45, 1 through 5. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. 
And there stood no man with them while Joseph was while while Joseph made himself known unto his brothers. And he wept out loud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. Wow. He was happy to see his brothers again and to reveal himself to them. And Joseph said unto his brothers, I am Joseph. <coughs> Does my father yet live? And his brethren or brothers could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. I would be too. But Joseph had a different spirit. Listen to this. And Joseph said unto his brothers, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me thither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Joseph could have had a different attitude. He says, look at me now, boys. Remember the dream I had? He didn't have that kind of spirit. He didn't have pride. He had humility. And he said it was God that did it. And you know what he did? He loved his brothers. Yes, he did. He loved them, kissed them. Yes. And then he saw his daddy again. Amen. Amen. Did you know love always wins? Amen. He loved his brother. And I know. And you know what Joseph held on to? He held on to that dream that God gave him. He had that dream. He had that dream. And he held on to it. Has God given you a dream? Are you hanging on to it? You know it's a God dream. God loves you. Jesus loves you. But you have free will. You have free choice. You can do what you want to do. I've seen people... I've been in a service and seen people say, I'm not going to serve you, but I'm not going up to that altar. No, you don't have to. I was in a service and thought, man, the devil's all in that young man. But he didn't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. You know what? Jesus loves him so much. Jesus said, well, go on. Jesus loves people. But they were hit by their eyes. If you're in here this morning, and you was to die right now, and you know in your heart that you wouldn't see Jesus. And you say, Brother Dennis, I need you to pray for me. If that's you, can you lift your hand up real quickly and put it right back down? Is that anybody in here saying, pray for me, pray for me, preacher. I want to make my life right with the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that anybody in here? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for Randy. Lord, I ask you to heal his eyes where he can read. Where he can read his Bible and he can read about you. Then when you take your hands off his eyes, off his life, go from him. In Jesus' name, eyes be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for touching Randy. And I believe the blood of Jesus over his eyes and his life.
clean stone. In Jesus' name. Eyes, be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We believe right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this mass, this growth that they found on Frank's kidney, I curse it and command it to disappear, cease to exist, be gone. Devil, you take your hands off Frank's kidney. Go in Jesus' name. Mass, growth, disappear, cease to exist. In Jesus' name, keep me, be healed, be free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We believe it's done. Right now.